All right, everybody. It is Andrew Whipple with The Plagued Gamer, and I've got a special treat for you today. We're taking a look at Expeditions Conquistador, and with me is the gameplay master, the designer behind <laughs> everything, Jonas. Introduce yourself to everybody. Yeah. Hey, I'm Jonas Vewa. I'm the uh, game designer on Expeditions Conquistador, and uh, I'm very glad to be here today. <laughs> yeah, th this is... So this is a, a Kickstarter-funded project right now. Why don't you maybe tell us a little bit about it? Well, it's a, it's a tactical, tactical role-playing game. Um, it's set in Central America around 1518. And you play, of course, a Spanish explorer, uh, Conquistador, who's come to this new world to uh, find fame and fortune or just uh, meet new people. And it's really up to you what you what you want to do there, how you want to behave and how you want to engage with the natives and stuff like that. So um, you explore the game uh, through this uh, world map, which is kind of a tactical, no, kind of a strategic resource management kind of thing. You have to find resources and keep your people happy and in good health. And then every time there's a conflict, if you don't find a peaceful way out of it, or you can't be bothered with the peaceful way out of it, then you go to a tactical combat system and it gets a little more interesting. Pretty brutal uh, and very sort of cerebral. I gotta introduce your team, too. I know they're all not here, but uh, with Logic Artists, do you guys have, what did you say, it was six members right now? Yeah, we've got six people in our office in Copenhagen. Uh, project manager, then there's me and our graphic designer, Daniel. There's uh, two programmers, Juan and Casper, and then we've got our CG artist, Cyan, as well. And then we've got abroad, we've got our composer in Chile, and our animators in England, and then we've got our illustrator in Turkey. <laughs> so why why Kickstarter? What did you Why did you decide that to fund this game, you wanted... You wanted the people to really get involved. What made you mm -hmm. decide that was the call? Well, first, I mean, Kickstarter is a great way to build up an audience. It's because as an indie studio, you don't typically have a lot of ways to, to generate hype. Uh, unless you get lucky and you really sort of hit what a couple of, of high-profile game journalists really like, and then they kind of carry you forward. So one of one of the really good things about Kickstarter is you can just kind of get your game out to the people who like it, and then you can use them um, as a as a kind of a, a wall to throw throw ideas at and kind of hear you know how they like the game, what sort of experience they're hoping for, and uh, really just basically interact with people. And of course, uh, it's a good way to stay independent in terms of funding because. You only have your audience to please, and it's it, usually with funding, it's kind of a problem if you have the people that are giving you money aren't necessarily the people who want to play your game. But with Kickstarter, that is absolutely the case. Right, and so you've got about a little less than a week left on the Kickstarter, and how close yeah, are you to days. the goal? Uh, we're very close, actually. Uh, at this rate, we have to get, I believe it's something like $750 per day for the rest of the period. Uh, and then we're home free. Uh, so it's looking pretty good. We haven't had a, a day in a while where we've pulled in less than, I think, yeah, 1,800 or something. So, uh, yeah, it's looking very good to reach the deadline. We're pretty optimistic about it. So it's my intention to show everybody out there this game that you've crafted, and you've given me a preview build just to showcase how the game might play. So why don't... We're just going to start a new game here. Why don't... You help us, why don't you walk us through everything? I know that being a turn-based strategy connoisseur, <laughs> I, I love to see this opening menu where it reminds me a lot of D&D, &D, where you need to take maybe a couple of different statistics, and you might want to max them out, but you always have the option to just completely negate one. Now, I don't know yeah. how good a conquistador would be with one leadership, but... <laughs> Yeah. You would have a problem with your morale, I think. Uh, you want to not go that low on leadership. I mean, you can, and then see if you can just make your people happy enough that it won't matter. But leadership is a good way to kind of negate the negative effects on morale of decisions that your people disagree with. 
I would say at this point, don't put too much into tactics because we've still got a lot of features coming up that make tactics useful. But in the build you're playing, we don't really have those. So you may want to just leave tactics alone. Gotcha. Okay. Well, we're going to be, we are going to be a dominant leader here. And, and you know what? We need to, we need to be able to trade a little bit. I think mm, so. Diplomacy is very useful in this game. Yeah. Definitely a good way to give yourself an edge both inside and outside of combat. Yeah, and, and then we'll, yeah, be able, we'll be able to see some more of that stuff coming up here, surely. Mm -hmm. And really, uh, both healing and hunting are pretty important, so just uh, distribute your, your last points between those, I would say. Yeah, well, let's just say we'll, we'll do this. Why not? So we're, we're a little above average in both. Makes sense. Now let's see. Let's see what that brings. I'm usually a min-maxer with certain things, but because I'm also unfamiliar with the overarching scheme of things, as far as this game is concerned, I kind of need to play a little bit more before we decide that. So I, I thought sure. this was a really interesting section. Mm -hmm. You actually can choose from these unique people who all have a certain job, and they have stories, but they also have descriptions. Yeah, they have uh, personality traits, which are the important part. And that's something that we're really happy with. It's basically our way of handling who will deal how with your decisions, if that makes sense. Like who will react in what way to, to your decisions. Uh, so if you want to be... You can just click the auto-hire button down there if you don't want to deal with all of this. But if you want to really sort of min-max your party, you can look at their personality traits and say, okay, I want to be the kind of guy who who does combat a lot, who's very aggressive and, um, and maybe attacks the natives at every given opportunity. In which case, you want to take the people who are aggressive and courageous and racist, maybe. That always helps. <laughs> um, but if you want to be more of a peaceful guy, of course, you go the other way. And it's it can be pretty difficult to assemble a full party of people that that precisely fit your playstyle, but that's where you kind of have to compensate by weighing your options in the actual game, right? Now let me ask you. It might be too early for this since I haven't seen enough. Let's say that you do want to be that peaceful conquistador. What if you take maybe a couple of people who are racist? Is there a way that you can maybe I don't know how deep this goes, but just persuade them that. It's not as such a bad thing to be more open-minded. Well, we've talked about having some of your people kind of come round to your way of thinking, but it probably won't be a systematic thing. It'd probably be the kind of thing that happens in special events and such where you'll have an opportunity to influence your people. Typically, it's very difficult to change somebody's mind. I think that's true in the real world, and that's definitely also going to be true here. Um, but, you know, it might happen. Um, I also want to note just in this section that the portraits are going to change. Right now, they share a lot of portraits, and already we've got a, a greater variety of portraits, and by the time we release the game, each follower will have a unique portrait, so you'll be able to distinguish them a bit better. I don't know about you, but I think I need the most racist, cautious, and adventurous <laughs> doctor of the group. Mm -hmm. Uh well, let's see. Just just to go with it, we'll we'll do I think we'll do a more aggressive but maybe peaceful approach and, and see how that works out for us. Now you, sure. you also you also said in the press build here that there's a couple of different classes that aren't as effective. Right uh, now there's a couple of classes that haven't been implemented in the build you're playing. Gotcha. Uh in the latest version of the game everybody is working and you can play with any class, but unfortunately, we sent this build out what three weeks ago, and we had yet to implement the scholars and the scouts. So they'll still be useful in, you know, conversations, and they'll still poke their head in with with specialist wisdom there. But you won't be able to use them in a fight. So you'll want to bring plenty of hunters and soldiers, and definitely a couple of doctors as well. Excellent. Okay. Well, I'm just going through right now. Also. Is this going to change when the game actually releases? I noticed that under each class, the endurance, the defense, the amount of damage, the movement, will will it eventually change? Will it have variety to it? Because they're all the same right now. Mm, no, that's uh, the combat statistics are character uh, class specific. They're not character specific. So gotcha. the, if you, 
all of your soldiers will have the same stats to begin with. And then we are, a lot of people have requested that we add passive abilities. So you can kind of, because every time you level your people up now, you get an active ability. Um, something you can actually use to your advantage in a fight. But we might also want to add little level up bonuses that are just, uh, you can maybe specialize your soldier more in a, in a, in an endurance way if you want, or you can put points into defense. But we will talk about that, so no promises yet. Excellent. I also think this is fantastic. We have a peaceful racist over here. That's, that's the <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're totally okay with that kind of uh, contradiction there because that just makes them more interesting. And um, the idea is that uh, n as few as possible of your people will have the exact same combination of uh, traits. I think there's only like two or three pairs of people that have the exact same traits. Hmm. All right, so... Let's let's see here. I want to have want to have a few more soldiers. I think we'll use. I would recommend at least three soldiers. Yeah, I, w I was actually gonna test it out and go with four and see what what's gonna happen. I can spoil something for you if you want. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Why don't we just you play? Get <laughs> yeah, you get a, you get another soldier in the beginning if you want. You can also reject her, but uh, gotcha. so you'll get kind of a bonus there. Okay, all right. Well, I suppose for just this kind of showcase, we'll we'll go with that. Let's see, and so we'll grab three here, and we'll go with a, a narcissistic, open-minded, courageous guy. All right, I'm down. I'm okay with that. Yeah, you can double click to select them too, if you want. It's a bit easier. Agreed. Thank you for that. Alright. We'll pick her, and how about... Why don't we grab at least one scholar? We need to have someone that can read. <laughs> yeah, scholars are... They appear a bit more in, in, in dialogue, because they have that kind of broad knowledge of what you're doing um, and that's of, of course to compensate for the fact that though they, they do have their uses in combat they are probably not as, as, as useful not as easy to use well at least as the other classes so we kind of want to it doesn't have to be entirely balanced like we can have a class that's not as good in combat and then maybe it'll be more important outside of combat excellent okay so let's oh that's right I need to uh, we'll, we'll just go with that name for now. <laughs> and this lets us know exactly what we've got. There's my bonuses, which, again, I absolutely love seeing things like this when you sort of like to play that min-max style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've added a bit more text uh, since then, just so you're not hit in the face with just these meaningless numbers. So, um, yeah. But it's it's kind of a balance because we do want... We don't want to alienate people too much, but at the same time we don't want to kind of pander to the lowest common denominator. Excellent. Alright, so let's do this. The year is 1518. <laughs> I think the, the text that you guys have sort of captures the era you're aiming for. <laughs> I'm really happy you think so. Yes, we've put a lot of work into kind of getting the, the writing right, because there's a lot of it, and it's kind of where the magic happens. So first of all, I just want to say that when when you initially jump into this game, I, I thought that it was going to be pretty bland as far as environments go, but no. It, it's it's a hex grid, turn-based game, and you guys did a pretty damn good job with the visuals. Thanks. I'm glad you think so. We have, again, our graphics artist, Daniel. He's really good at making the most out of this engine. So yeah, uh, I will mention though that the hexes are already gone. Actually, they are a leftover from a, a bygone era, and uh, we removed them last week. <laughs> so the game is no longer hex-based outside of combat. It's now just uh, free movement for the exploration part. But you still, of course, only get a certain amount of moves every day. Okay. Yeah. So when you get into the combat, the hex grid is still there then. Absolutely. Okay. Great. So here we go. We'll start it all off. Some confiscation is happening. 
I'm accosted by a tall, heavy-set man with graying hair, dressed in a captain's army uniform. Oh, man. Yeah, this is the kind of game that doesn't come across very well in a demo like this. But uh, it is, of course, a very text-based game. But um, that's why we've put so much work into really making it branch and react to your responses and give it just give it a lot of personality, basically. Yeah, the, the music is pretty rocking too. Thanks. All right. Yeah. We've yeah. got this uh, excellent composer in Chile called Leo Badinella. Uh, actually, I worked with him on a previous project. Uh, the name is Ma for Deus Ex. That's how we came to know him. He's really good. Now, that was pretty cool. That guy, as it said, accosted me. Great word. Mm -hmm. Very aggressive, but I just I played the person. that I accepted what he was doing, but at the same time questioned you know, why. It lets me slip by. Now, I didn't I really notice, though. Did you decide to station someone there to watch your stuff? I didn't see that option. Maybe <laughs> just because I wasn't right. paying attention. No, no, it depends on what conversation options you choose. But okay. That, that'll that come back to kick you in the ass later, of course. I'm sure, I'm <laughs> sure. And I, I look forward to it. So let's let's explore the, the menus here. So this looks like... This looks like the same thing that we were looking at on the previous screen. Just lets us know what we chose, some of our traits. Yeah, and you've got your resources on right there. This is your inventory. So you will, all of your, the items that you acquire throughout the game will appear on the left side. And... You can move them up to bring them into a fight. You can bring three items at a time. And, uh, yeah, then your resources on the right. Hmm. So you're really going to have to think about it. And then, of course, when you get ambushed sometimes, you just, you're just you going to have the items that you just didn't want. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You have to think ahead. And then the final screen there on the, on the right, that's your follow-up menu. All right, here we go. Oh, healthy. Got some Oregon Trail stuff happening here. Mm hmm. So basically, your people have a condition, which in this case for everyone is healthy since you just started. And then when you get injured in a fight or through a mishap in an event, they, their condition will change and they will be, for example, uh, they will have harmless bone fracture or severe stab wound or something like that. And then this determines how much medicine it's going to cost to treat them. And what what is the chance that the injury gets worse if you don't treat them and stuff like that? Uh, huh. So over, over here you can see on the right you have controls for leveling up your people. They have five ranks each, uh, and you currently have no XP, so you can't do anything. But they're all recruits. And then below that you can assign equipment to them. But I believe you have no equipment because it was all confiscated. Right. And seeing this too, obviously the longer that you have people with you, the more successful you are. They're going to become very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, you can only have one lieutenant and two sergeants at a time, because obviously you can't have a party full of lieutenants. I Those was just the... going to ask about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so those are the top two ranks, and that means you have to carefully select, because your lieutenant is important. He plays into a, or he or she plays into a lot of events, and uh, in some cases, you know, the personality traits of your lieutenant will influence the morale of the other people. Now, well, I notice over here it says that everybody's healthy, and we just started the game. Is this is this the kind of game where you're constantly going to be able to hire other people on? If let's say that Lopez gets killed by a stray arrow, is he is he just gone? Is that it? Yeah, he'll be gone. Awesome. So you 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 have the people you start with, and then some some case, cases down the line, people will join you. You'll have events where you'll find someone who wants to join up, right? Just in, in most role-playing games. You'll meet someone who, who will join you. Uh, and there's no upper limit to how many people you can have in your party. But um, a lot of these sort of incidental followers, they'll be mutually exclusive. So if you're allied with one faction, for example, you'll be missing out on all of the people that are allied to the other faction. Uh, but yeah, mostly... The, the, the bulk of your party will be made up of the people you started with, and anytime someone dies, then they're gone for good. And anyone can die at any point. There's no there's no plot immortality there. Yeah, so we're bringing some Fire Emblem and Baldur's Gate into the mix. Mm. Okay. Also, uh, note that there's currently nothing on the right side of the screen, 
We're going to have some really nice looking illustrations there. We actually have them in already, but again, miss them for this build. <laughs> Speaking so, of Baldur's Gate. Portraits of the people you're talking to most of the time, yeah. And then just kind of mood illustrations of the places you're in and what's going on and stuff like that. Oh. And it really adds a lot to the, to the dialogue system. Uh, we've cut it down a little bit on the text in this event as well. It's a bit, it's a lot of text to hit you with. Well, all of it. see, as as a player who really enjoys story and atmosphere, you guys are nailing it right now because it makes me feel like, hey, I'm here and I landed on a very unfamiliar place, and these guys are telling me what to do, man. So, come on. Oh, sure, you'll still have that. It's just like these first couple of events. There's some walls of text there. We've trimmed a little bit but no we're not afraid of hitting you with a lot of text it's hopefully it's engaging and I mean we do have the goals menu so that if you don't really care about all the text if you don't want to read it you can just kind of skip through it and try to pick the person the choices that fit the personality you're trying to role play and then it, the goals will tell you what you have to do in case you, you skipped it. Right, yeah, just just looking at that menu there. and you, Or you can just look on the screen because it's telling you where you need to go. It's yeah. nice to also have that too. Especially yeah, if course. maybe you take a break from the game for like a week and you come back and you go, oh shoot, what was I supposed <laughs> to do? Yeah. Yeah, and then there'll, there'll be a map um, to show you the location of your objective, assuming that it, it's reasonable that you would know where it is. Um, yeah, we, we have that in as well, but just not in this build. You're going to hear that a lot. We've really done a lot over the past three weeks, so there's a lot of stuff here that you're missing out on. So now you're talking to the Quartermaster, and he's kind of... He wants to test your skills in battle. I see and, that. Uh, and there's no way out of this. That's This is one of the few cases where you really have no option but to, to go through this thing and then enter the fight, because it, it is the tutorial fight. Although the tutorial is currently missing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it's a press build and yeah, it's in there, you'll get a, a pretty decent introduction to the game. All right, so here we go. Yeah, th this is the mock battle that you were talking about. So let's. Oh yeah, we can only bring three people in. So this is. Yeah, this I is think important. you just selected two doctors and a hunter. That's a. Bad I did. Point. I did. That's a bad idea. You might want to take one of each, actually. Okay, so, yeah, jumping right in here. So you guys, obviously looking around here, you, you want to be able to utilize cover. Yeah, that's uh, our ranged attacks are based on actual line of sight. And uh, we've got two different checks, so it's, it knows if they're in partial cover or if they're in complete cover. So you can see that on the kind of dotted line that you get if you try to aim at someone with a ranged character. You can see you have three different character types. The top guy is your soldier. He's not very good at ranged fighting but he's very good in melee the guy you've currently selected is your hunter so good at shooting bad at hitting and then in the bottom you've got your doctor who's just terrible all around but she can heal <laughs> the other people and that's very useful exactly now is there a way that you can actually rotate the screen yeah you can press q and e or you can hold down the right mouse button excellent okay perfect so my tactics would be i'm dealing with three people Mm -hmm. Looks like we've got, yeah, they have a doctor, they have a hunter, and they also have a soldier, so it's the exact same stuff. Yeah, and there's a little trick here, because in the build that you're playing, we were trying something where you had to have medicine in order to heal. And that means, since you have no medicine right now, your doctor is completely useless. She hmm. can't actually heal. Uh, we went away from that again, though, because it was too annoying, but uh, we're still using it for reviving. You have to have medicine in order to use revive. All right, well, we need we need a doctor present. It boosts our soldier and hunter's morale here, so let's, <laughs> yeah, let's, see, let's see exactly what we're going to do. All right, so maybe... Uh, why, why don't we... See, that's partial cover. It turns red where it hits something, so you can see why it is that you your accuracy is lowered when you're shooting at them. Gotcha. All right, so I'm going to move my soldier over here, and I noticed, too, that there's yeah, a couple of actions. So you've got the guard action for the soldier. That's pretty cool. So you really kind of want the soldier around someone like the doctor or even the hunter who can help protect him just by standing in an adjacent slot. If it's your priority to keep those guys safe, then yeah. But you could, of course, also say, well, it's not the soldier's job to keep the doctor alive. It's the doctor's job to keep the soldier alive. That's right. 
But uh, yeah, you'll notice that there's two different uh, areas that you can move in. And uh, if you stay inside the light green area, as you did right now, you can still attack this turn. You can move further than that. You can move all the way out into the dark green area, but then you lose your attack. And you have to wait until the next turn to attack. Gotcha. Okay, well, I'm not going to attack any time, and I'm not going to leave my soldier open. So we are going to move once again around here. Mm-hmm. We'll see how that goes. All right. Let's see, that's the doctor, so I'm... I don't know my... Is there a way that you can tell the attack range? Well, you can... If you hover over them, the tooltip will show you a probability of hitting, right? Hmm. It says something, something percentage. 60%. Yeah, and you can move and then attack and then move again, as long as you stay inside the light green area. So uh, you can actually take, take a few steps forward and shoot, because the f closer you are, the easier it is to hit. And then go back again. All right, well, let's do this. We're going to shoot the freaking doctor. Why? Because he's a pain right in the ass. Bam! 26 damage. How do you like that, Doctor? He doesn't, he doesn't like it very much. Good shot. Yeah. Alright, so I can't actually move anymore because I used all my all my stuff. Mm-hmm. You can still move with your Doctor. Yes. So the Doctor is just going to... He's going to do his normal thing. Yeah, you'll notice the ring around their feet that indicates whether they still have moves left and whether they still have an attack left. Okay. So let's take a look at everything down here. The models are pretty good. Look at that Thanks. ground. <laughs> and uh, eventually your equipment will show up on your model. So the more you have uh, armor, for example, the more armor will actually show up on them. Yeah, we really want to make it... You know, give you some feedback for how well equipped. Whoa! Oh. He attacked me twice there. Mm-hmm. He used quick shots, and he hit with both of them, which is an unusual occurrence because quick shot reduces your accuracy. All right, so we are. Let's see. Why don't we? So what you may want to do here is do some flanking. Yeah, I'm actually going to go right behind him because I was about to bring that up. I love how you guys put in this attacks of opportunity system. Uh, it, it works It works a lot like the tabletop game, like Warhammer. Where if you yeah, we stole it directly from Dungeons & Dragons. Might as well say it like it is. <laughs> sure, sure. Still pretty nice. All right, so <laughs> let's, let's move right behind him. Showcase a little system here. Oh. That was a terrible idea. Oh, yeah, great. Because, yeah. Because he was in combat, so he just decided, all right, well, whatever. Yeah, it's because when you move out of a space that is within melee range of an enemy, then they get a free attack on you. So, But gotcha. now you can actually go down there because uh, he only gets one free attack every turn. All right. Is there a way that I can, I can revive my dude? Not unless you level up your doctor. All right. But I mean, this is the first fight, and if you lose that, then that's to be expected. So there's not going to be any long-term consequences for that. Gotcha. All right, so flanking strike. Ah, uh, that's right. Somebody called the doctor. Mm-hmm. And then your soldier, of course, gets the same advantage. Mm. Well, I believe that's it. So let's end our turn. Not nice. You shouldn't shoot the doctor. You should shoot the doctor. You should make sure to kill the doctor as soon as possible. <laughs> Don't help them, damn it! And he chooses to run away. You want to get him before he gets to the doctor. Oh yeah. But he's not gonna survive an attack from your soldier now. He's so low on health. Bam! So that was the greatest threat out of the way. Yes. And now we're gonna move back down here, and we're just gonna. We're gonna try and stay together, just overall. So we'll end our turn after that. Make him come over. All right, fine. All right, this guy's making me angry. Well, at least he didn't hit with both of them this time. Well, when you use quick shot, your accuracy is lower to 65%. So there's still a marked advantage to using it. But in some situations, you just want to make sure you actually hit because there is a chance that you miss with both of them. Right. The closer you are, the better to use quick shot, basically. All right. Well, if I move closer like this, he's probably just going to end up shooting me. So, 
Well, your soldier will be in the way, though. Plus, your soldier actually got him locked down right now. If he tries to move now, you get a free attack on him. True. It's nice to see that the AI knows about that. Yeah. And I do not want to move in there, so we'll, we'll see yeah, how it but goes. Now, see, now the doctor's just going to heal him right back up. Yeah. It's going to end up as a war of attrition, and you can't heal, so you're going to lose that. So you want to... Oh. I don't know how... how oh, what a right jerk. Now. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. No, don't... Yeah. Yeah, I, I do not... Actually, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You can use tactical move. It's down there in the corner. The left co Ah, never mind. Allows you to move past or away from enemies without provoking attacks of opportunity. See? Good to know. But we're going to try this anyway. Like I say, that will be a tutorial, and that's going to tell you something like that. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> but yeah, what you're doing now is not a bad idea. That's going to work. Pretty sure. I mean, the hunters are just so bad in melee, so it should be possible for you to wear him down. gonna attack me but that's okay ah wow oh nice 44 damage but he's gonna get healed what a jerk Nice. Right. So now let's see what they do. Huh. E okay. <laughs> he just, he just, he's just waiting to see what you do. Well, yeah. I went over and I killed him. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. Flawless victory? I don't know about that, but... <laughs> Yeah, that's because it's a trial. Yeah. It's a it's a test combat. So usually there would be a pretty high chance that ah, and now you can see the portraits as well. Usually there's a pretty high chance that uh, somebody would get a permanent injury, or at least an injury that carries over into the world map, and then you'd have to deal with it there. Right. Very interesting. I do enjoy how that combat works, and the attacks of opportunity, obviously, when you play this game a little bit more, you, you'll be able to just look at something and go, oh, okay, well, obviously I'm not going to do that, like I did. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to get it's gonna get much more intuitive than it is in the beginning. Yeah, so you can always center the view. All right, so let's... I'd say let's, let's go into an actual battle, and we can talk a little bit about that. We'll wind things down here. Mm-hmm. So you may have noticed that none of your choices so far have influenced the morale of your party. That's because this is just the beginning of the game. Once you get outside of Santo Domingo, everything starts to get a bit more important. And your morale will be influenced by your decisions. Yeah, the way that you guys describe what's going on with the governor, especially like the small pauses as it's saying, and maybe you're describing the expression on their face, it, you, you really, it really puts you in that situation it gives the game more perspective and yeah. I, I appreciate something like that that's why exactly. I dialogue like this I don't, I don't even think it's too lengthy no, I'm glad you think so uh, of course it's constantly undergoing editing and improving but uh, yeah I mean we're not we're not really trying to get less wordy we're just trying to make sure that everything is high quality <laughs> you lift her hand to your lips and kiss it gently. <laughs> she blushes ferociously. That's awesome. Yeah, All right. I mean, we want to make it. We want to transport you to that kind of time, right? And even though we're taking some liberties with gender equality and stuff like that, we do want to to you know make you feel like you might have been there back then. So there's the quartermaster, mm -hmm. and you're kind of getting your stuff back. And it's good that you also change the portraits when that yeah. person is talking. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you're going to probably get some, some instances where the portrait just doesn't show up because they don't have one yet. But, uh, of course, in the final game, 
there will be portraits for all of the main characters and all of your own followers and stuff like that. So uh, and well, just what you said, because I didn't station a guy there earlier, and now some of my stuff... You're losing all of your stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. Stuff. It gives you... It's all experience. A game, yeah, yeah, sure. a game like this, I, I can't even say that it's counted in hours. It's counted in just scenarios and how you talk to people and what you do. Mm-hmm. And it has a lot of replayability as well when all of those little decisions matter. And I mean, we are not really worried about preventing the player from failing. Uh, as I was talking to you about before, in the in the next campaign, I mean, this one is a bit linear in its storyline and in its quest progression because it is the intro campaign. Uh, it has a lot of exploration and stuff like that, but the overall storyline is fairly linear. Uh, the next campaign that we're, we're already working on, uh, it's gonna basically let you return to Spain at any point. So you have a lot of freedom to just experiment, to create a party where you you select terrible skills and you select hopeless, hopeless followers. <laughs> and then you just go out and explore and you're pummeled by the natives maybe, or it just doesn't work out and everybody leaves you and then you're left with just two followers maybe you have to limp back to your ship and return to Spain and you can do that because you don't have to play through the entire campaign to get to the end game right you'll just get a different ending if you return before you explore everything so there's plenty of freedom to kind of well mess around basically well what if I decide I want to have an entire party of doctors well, you can. I mean, well, you can't because there's only four doctors to choose from. <laughs> but uh, but you can pick, you know, four doctors and four scholars and then maybe two scouts. And you will be terrible in combat and it'll probably not work. But, I mean, that's still a, it's still fun, right? It's fun to try it out. And you can still return to Spain anytime you want and you'll just get a different ending. Probably a terrible ending. All right, so we have to go to those ruins they were talking about. And I did mm-hmm. recruit that soldier, which is... That's cool. cool. So you can go into the follower menu and see who she is, read her bio and such. But you can also just leave the city now. You'll notice that it's that generating the hexes outside of the city. Interesting. So you can just go to some of these places, walk by them, and these people want to talk to you. and It's almost yeah. like a quest hub. They are side quests, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're picking up several side quests in the city, of course. But there's also quests spread across the world and... Not all of the events are quests, they're just things that happen and you have to deal with them. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, the, we've made a lot of changes to the game since this build. Even this build isn't the most recent ones. There's no hexes in the world map uh, anymore. And also, in this build you'll see every single event is just a spinning icon. Now, in the latest build, you actually you actually see what the... the the object is that you're interacting with. So in the case of the church, you're clicking on the church to actually go there and you're clicking on the palace. If if it's just a guy in the street, you'll see a guy standing there and you're, you're clicking on him to talk to him and stuff like that. So it's not as abstract anymore. <laughs> right. And looking at the screen, as you just suggested, so it, it appears that pretty much everyone in my party has leveled up. Yeah, uh, well, that's the thing. Well, because you have a combined pool of XP, and you're using that XP to level up a couple of people now. But that uses the XP, so you can't level all of them up, you can level a couple of them up. Now, if you have 100 left, mm-hmm. so now you're out of XP. You chose yes. to level a couple of them up. Who was the other one you leveled up? I leveled up... Uh, who was it? Oh, the, the hunter here. Yep. Uh, yeah, they get a pretty cool ability on level 2, but I would have leveled up one of the doctors because then you could revive. Yes, of course. It's a matter of, you know, uh, taste, of course, which ability you, you think is most Im- important, but personally, I like to be able to revive my people. Oh, right. I, of course, like for me, when I play a game like this, having one type of healer maxed out early is almost a must. But, mm-hmm. you know, just testing things out, I wasn't exactly sure what all the abilities are, and hey, you experiment and you learn. Sure. So now you want to head east, out of the uh, out of the city. Oh, or I you can go I and pick up another <laughs> side quest there. I could attend a sermon, but mm-hmm. that's fine. Alright, so can we... Oops. <laughs> 
We can go ahead and get out of here. It's nice. Yeah, you just open get, rations. Yeah, you just get stopped on the way out of the city. Just uh, the guard captain wants to impart a few words of wisdom. Basically, just the end of the tutorial. So it's like, remember to do this and that. Keep your keep your people well fed. Basically, of course, if you run out of rations <laughs> on your travels, people's morale is gonna suffer, and then you might end up with a mutiny on your hands. That would be bad. That would be very bad. Yes. All right. So you want to head due east, basically. Just go directly to the right. Okay. See, there's no quest point or anything at this point, but uh, there is in the final game. Oh. You'll, you'll be able to find your objectives more easily. There's still plenty of incentive to explore. There's plenty of stuff there that you, you don't get pointed at, but... What happens if we just decide to make camp right now? Well, then you make camp. You get a fresh set of moves, and you blow through your rations for the day. All right, and then it appears that I cannot move. Have you clicked on the button? You click camp and nothing happens? Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. All right. So you can only move a certain amount, and then you have to make camp? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you have a certain amount of moves every day, uh, obviously, and then it, it's night, your people are tired, you have to camp and, and recuperate. And that also spends your... Uh, oh. Gain yep. for medicine, alright. So I see that you have this thing where the camera is kind of locked. You may want to press WASD, one of them. And that kind of puts the camera in yes. order. Alright, so let's, let's get up there. These must be the ruins they were talking about. Yeah. Do you want to press one of... Press W. Just press W there. Okay. Does that work for you at all? Yeah, there we go. Sure. That's the normal camera. All right. All right. Let's do it. We need to attack. Yeah, so obviously there's the diplomatic solution out of that, which you didn't select for demonstration purposes. But it is possible to resolve this in several different ways with diplomacy. And Just depending on, on your skills and your resources, you might come out of it with more or less losses. We, it's a really it's a really difficult thing this thing with diplomacy because a lot of the time you know you're giving the player you're letting the player earn the ability to skip content right you're gonna if you level up diplomacy then you'll be able to skip fights but the fights are the fun part of the game right that's why you you're playing the games for the fights presumably some of it at least well some people that play games like civilization they resolve everything by diplomacy in general and you can still get you still get a lot of fun out of that. Yeah, that's what we're hoping, that some people will like that. But I suspect that most people would prefer to take the violent solution out. But even then, you know, we want diplomacy to be useful. We want it to be able to give you an edge, like start you off in better positions or, you know, reduce the number of enemies so it's a bit it's a bit easier to handle. And generally, just maybe even just give you more, uh, more resources after or before the fight. Uh, yeah, but, but also, you know... It is a challenge. To how to make diplomacy interesting is just making it a little game of its own. And oh, for sure. It, and it, it, use your resources. And it looks like, since this is one of my leveled up guys, I have a new move called Aim Shot. Mm -hmm. so it's it good if you're, uh, if you're standing far away from your people. It basically pretends that the person is standing half as far away from you as he actually is. So the further you are away from your target the better that ability is. Now this is very interesting because we are going to get flanked if uh, there's a trapper right there. So I gotta make sure that he can't get around me to get to my hunters. Or my he's doctors. A, he's more of a ranged character so he's probably gonna do some, some hit and run. Like he's gonna pop out and shoot and then pop back into cover. Well I better move him in there then. That's good. That's a good call. Then you lock him down, and he can't use his bow. So we're gonna do that. You can now attack he, him. Now the he same can't trip. be helped. So he's not wearing any armor. Nice. Is there a way that you can actually see exactly how many hit points are left on them? Is that just uh, endurance? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, that's okay. endurance. That's basically the hit points. For a second, I thought it was just talking about like percentages. 
Ah, okay. no, that's the health. All right, so we've got Pedro here. Obviously, I don't really want to do too much with them, but I can't leave this guy to just die. So we're going to do a few things. We're going to move him up here. Mm -hmm. Just in case he needs a little heal, help him out. Then uh, I'll go ahead and move him up. I'm going to assume that the shaman is the healer. That is accurate. He's that not means... quite the equivalent of your dog down. Like he, he doesn't have quite the same stats. Can move a little less. Uh, but yeah, he's the healer and you want to take him out quickly. Definitely. All right. So why don't we... Let's see. Quick shot is... Let's... Yeah, let's see if we can do this. So the native classes have different abilities than the Spanish classes. A couple of them are shared, like the hunter can do use restore to heal your people. The shaman can use restore as well. But the other two abilities that the shaman earns when leveling up are different than the doctors. Um, and the same goes for the other classes. A few of the abilities are shared between native and Spanish classes, but most of them are different. And you get to play with the native abilities if you manage to recruit any of the natives for your party which is possible during the campaign. Interesting. It's nice to see that you guys took the time to make those guys different. You're not having the hunters or something on the natives use aim shot. <laughs> yeah, we don't want it to be entirely symmetrical. Also, we are like the one of the um, one of the interesting dynamics of course is that uh, the Spaniards had really good equipment uh, and the difference in sort of the close combat strength of Spaniards and natives were probably not as great as you'd assume because the natives had some like the Native Americans had some really good uh, strong weapons even though they were like they look crude they're just like clubs with obsidian spikes in them but they have they they, they pack a punch right and they're really they're really powerful really lethal um, but we do want to, to to represent the fact that the Spaniards are, are generally better equipped. They have steel armor, they have steel swords, they have uh, muskets or matchlock rifles. Um, so equipment is a huge factor in a fight. And uh, anything you can do to reduce the usefulness of your opponent's equipment, such as flanking or um, stunning them so that they can't defend themselves, that's really, uh, that's really powerful. I see. Now, if I took a hunter and I shot him in melee range, what kind of penalties are we talking about here? There's no penalties on the attack, but you do get a free attack from him. He gets to attack you before you shoot. Ooh, okay. Think about it, because matchlock rifles, like you're lighting a fuse and then you're aiming, and he has a lot of opportunities to hit you while you're standing there pointing a rifle at him, waiting for it to fire. Oh, certainly. So I'm locked in this... combat right now. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So I can't... Yeah, I'm obstructed by this guy standing in front of me. So let's go ahead and use aim shot here. Well, well, actually, we want to use quick shot, yeah. Yeah, that's what you want. Because the further away, the lower the accuracy. I might kill this guy right now. That's good. Oh, almost. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, okay. Well, that's going to do it for wait, my... Wait, wait, wait. Do does your, doesn't your doctor have an attack? My doctor does have one, but I'd have to go around, and that would be bad. Uh, okay, okay. It's hard to yeah. see in this resolution. So let's see what happens. Yep, these doctors are coming in handy. That one shaman just had to run away. That wuss. <laughs> Oh, that was a hard blow. Hey, leave him alone. Alright, so first things first, let's go ahead and give our guys a little boost. Whoop! He's, he's a little squishy, but I can't... Uh... Would I move if I used the medicine to heal my soldier up here? 
Mm-hmm. Okay. You have to be in you have to be in melee range. Good call. All right, so I do not want to do that. Not yet. So let's go ahead and finish this guy off. Sayonara. And we use another quick shot. Well, that was upsetting. <laughs> yeah, quick shot is always a gamble. It does, it does give you a little edge. Like it's not a, it doesn't have your accuracy. It sets it to 70, 65 percent. So it it is always a little bit better than than like objectively speaking, it's a little bit better than just using a normal attack. But in some situations, you just want to make sure that you're hitting. Then one one accurate attack is preferable. All right, so I've got one more to do. I'll just yeah. You can't heal yourself, so we'll just heal him. All right. Looking pretty good right now. Yeah, you're doing well. So one of the good things about the way we're doing the battles is, I mean, a lot of these games um, where you have a separate kind of exploration layer and then you have the battle layer, then they choose to randomize the combat, right? They randomize the battlefields. Um and that's nice if you if you want to have an an essentially infinite amount of battles or in most cases it'll be like 200 or 300 battles it's good that they are random because you couldn't possibly generate that much content <laughs> what we want to do is we want to have a smaller amount of much more varied fights. You can see there's a lot of stuff going on in this battle. There's a lot of cover. There's an interesting layout here. You could have started in a completely different location, way down in the left corner, if you made different decisions during the conversation. Right, giving it yourself could, an advantage. And that's when it, that tactics would come in play, right? Yeah, it is. And also sometimes diplomacy. Um, but mostly tactics, yeah. And of course, you know, you might have waited until it was night, and then it would have been... It would have been night, there would have been a different amount of enemies, everybody would have started in different locations. And when it's night, for example, um, your ranged set attacks suffer a 50% penalty because it's hard, harder to aim in the night. Uh, and stuff like that. So we want to just focus on making the the battles that we have, first of all, they're going to be relevant to the narrative, like they're going to really fit the narrative situation. Secondly, they're going to be much more varied than you may be used to from this kind of game because they are handcrafted, right? And they are crafted in a way that varies the tactical situation, not just the aesthetics. Like, we want to really force you to, to adapt your tactics to the situation every single time you enter combat. All right, so let's see what they do here now. Kind of want to just stay in tight formation just so my my doctors can heal yeah i noticed that you ended your fight without using your attack for the soldier uh do you realize you can switch between melee and ranged with everyone right yes i i, I do know that <laughs> i just i didn't for some reason because yeah. i wanted to be controversial Sure. I mean, soldiers suck at ranged, but uh, it's better to well, just take take it. a pot shot, right? Yeah. It, it was. It's always one of those things that people will say. Oh man, if my medic, that guy's got one life left. Can he like pick up a stone and throw it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, there really has been when I'm just playing this game just to test it out. There has been a lot of situations where one lucky shot just changes the course of the battle. That's that's the good stuff, right? Yup. And. The aim shot right there comes in handy because there's no distance penalties at all, and that guy uh, just goes down. Yeah, uh, there are actually. It just they're halved. Like the distance penalties are half as big as they used to be, as they usually are. So it it really seems like he's much closer at, at this distance. Yeah, he probably actually was almost next to you. And then I'll go ahead and I'll use my soldier's ability to stun him. So now he can't do anything for the next turn. And that means you can flank him. Like, he can't attack you for free now, right? That's so you right. can just ride past him if you want. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, yeah, of course you can't attack them. Yeah, unfortunately. But... Well, I should have saved that heal for somebody else. So, just in case, because I don't know how crazy these guys are going to be. Well, I should be fine. How about that? 
triple flank. This guy's done. <coughs> yeah, that doesn't work though, because flanking only um, yeah. <laughs> only works when they're directly on the opposite side. So he's just surrounded. We'll do that. He is surrounded, yeah. So if he tries to get out of this, he's gonna have a hard time. He can use tactical move and run away, of course, but uh, yeah, it's he's just delaying the inevitable if he tries that. You've pretty much won this fight. Yeah. And we are thinking about having some kind of surrender where they just give up and they go like, okay, you win. But no, you have to fight until the end. <laughs> it is unrealistic that they're like, okay, I'm just going to throw my life away. It could, be <laughs> it could be fun if they go like, I want to live, I give up. But, I mean, we'll see because it is, of course, I mean, maybe it's an option, right? They try to surrender to you and you can just refuse and kill them all. Right. That could be fun. We'll see. We'll see. So accuracy. We'll see. We'll, let's move one space. See how much it goes up. 80. Okay. All right. All right. Move one more. 81. Okay. All right. So just one. It's uh, It's, oh! not, it's not a linear function, actually. It's ex it's exponential. So it kind of... The, the, the closer distances, there's not a lot of difference between that, but then it drops off at a certain point. And then, so you'll see that there's kind of a range where it, one hex makes a huge difference. And then it just drops to 5% accuracy. So if you're, if you're far enough away from them, it's just always going to be a 5% chance to hit. <laughs> I do like how you guys have allowed the use of moving and attacking. Whether, whether it's that you have to attack first or move afterwards or, or move before, I mean. It seems mm -hmm. to be able to do that. And then, just like you said, you know, when you get more used to this game, all of these different options are just going to be able to flow. And I'm sure that you're going to be able to unlock other things as you level up or, or just increase your experience, excuse me. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, of course, um, yeah, the, the good thing about being able to switch between moving and attacking is just the tactical opportunities you get. When you can you can switch between characters at will, it makes it much easier to kind of set up certain maneuvers. Yeah, we think that that's it gives a really good flow to the fight. So this guy just gave up. He's just like, all right, whatever, just kill me, man. Yeah, he's probably. I mean, that happens once in a while. He's probably <laughs> gonna, gonna take it away because it it just seems it's, it seems a little sad. I'm barbaric. I stood on top of the shaman and killed his friend. Yeah, that's how it goes. And sometimes it can be a good idea to stand on top of a dead person because that means they can't be revived. But yeah, <laughs> you made it through that fight without losing anyone, which is actually kind of a shame because it would be fun to show uh, the persistent injuries, right? Well, I but think I think that everybody that's been watching this has just a firm grasp on what to expect from this game. And it's it's going to be, I'd say, it's deceptively deep because the more you play it, the more rewarding it's going to be as, as I said you know being able to unlock different rankings for your guys makes them better and you always you always have that feeling of dread because if your guy dies you're done yeah he, he's completely gone now saying that if he does die your doctors if they're leveled up they could revive him but if you finish the battle without reviving is he just gone is that it no, no, no. How that works is that if if anybody has been incapacitated during the fight, we'll see that if you if you look closer, those guys that you've downed, they're not dead, right? They're still kind of writhing. They're still moving, down. right? St same goes for your people. They're not dead. They're incapacitated. But there's a chance that anybody who's been incapacitated during the fight, no matter whether they're still standing at the end because you've revived them or not, they will have an injury that carries over into the world level. So then you'll be able to see on this list here harmless lacerations or uh, severe ballistic trauma and then every time you make camp you'll be able to treat your injured followers and you can't use them in another fight until they're healthy again and if you don't treat them then their condition will get worse and eventually they'll die oh man <laughs> I'm just I'm looking at all this, just thinking, all right, you know, what would I, what could I do different when, when this game actually comes out and mm -hmm. I play my party, you know, what am I going to do different? Am I going to be that ruthless guy? Am, am I going to just try and take all these guys out and I just don't care? You've got those, the decision-making process and all these other decisions that people just kind of want in games now, and you've put it into a strategy game, and that's, that's really old school. 
Yeah, well, we don't think of it as a strategy game. I mean, there are strategy aspects to it, yeah, but we think of it as a role-playing game first and foremost. But of course, a lot of there's there's historically been a lot of overlap between strategy and role playing, and we don't we don't aim to change that. So you can in, call it a strategy game if you want. <laughs> yeah, and before we set off here, that's a really good point. Why did you guys decide to go the historical route instead of say fantasy? Oh uh, well, that was actually the, one of the main points was to avoid fantasy because we just. There's just so many fantasy games, and we like fantasy, but it's it's hard to stand out in that environment, and it's also just, we feel like enough fantasy games are being made by other people, and we wanted to do something different, and we were just sitting there thinking, well, we want to make a game that's about exploration fundamentally, and what is what could possibly facilitate exploration better than the age of exploration? So we just figured, okay, well, the p- perhaps the single greatest sort of task of exploration in human history has been, you know, charting the Europeans charting out the new world, like the Americans, and we figured that was a good setting, because there's plenty of moral problems with it, plenty of conflict, and plenty of um, historical um, ethical kind of material to grab and use I I think it's extremely ambitious and why don't you let everybody know when you plan on coming out with this? Yeah, um, the release date is January 2013, and uh, if you go into our Kickstarter and pledge there, uh, you will actually get, if you pledge $30, you're going to get uh, beta access as soon as the Kickstarter ends, which means we're going to send you this build of the game, and you can play it for yourself. And then, uh, 2013, January, that's when the game is coming out, and we want to keep working on it after that, of course, but uh, let's just deal with that when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> deal with it as it approaches, cause, yeah. and, and we'll get we'll get into that when, when the game comes back, I'm sure that we'll be seeing you guys again soon. Now, yeah. when, it, when it does release, do you guys have a price point? An actual, like, maybe retail price? Yeah, we're gonna probably launch at uh, $20. We'll see how people feel about that. So if you uh, if you go in and, and, and pledge fifteen dollars now, you're getting the game when it comes out, and you'll save some money. Uh, what nice. platforms? It's coming out on Windows and on Mac and on Linux. Excellent. You're gonna you're gonna be releasing through Steam. We are hoping for Steam, but we're on green light right now. So you go in and give us an upload there if you want to see us on Steam. Otherwise, we have a deal with Desura, and we're hoping to approach good old games as well. Excellent news. Jonas, thank you so much for allowing us to go through this build of the game. And, yeah, you can <laughs> you can expect me to take this a lot more seriously once <laughs> yeah. I actually get my hands on the full product. But it's an absolute blast to play. There's just It's deceptively deep, as I said, and the game looks great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me.